What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the online program giving you exactly what you need to eliminate small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and intestinal methanogen overgrowth. Probiotics are a really interesting topic when it comes to SIBO. And in this week's video, we're gonna discuss the available research on a specific type of probiotic called soil-based probiotics for the treatment of SIBO. Soil-based probiotics are a specific type a probiotic that contain beneficial bacteria that are found in soil in the ground. If you see the name of the probiotic begin with the word bacillus, you'll know it's a soil-based bacteria. Some common soil-based probiotics include bacillus coagulans, bacillus subtilis, bacillus clausi, and bacillus lichiniformis. These bacillus species are different from a lot of other probiotics because of their ability to survive the strong acid of the stomach as well as make it through the intestines while still being alive, which surprisingly is not the case for a lot of probiotics. Bacillus species are also known to produce antimicrobial peptides, produce some vitamins such as vitamin B2 and vitamin B12, and they can help regulate the types and quantities of bacteria that are in your microbiome. Now that you know a little bit about what soil-based probiotics are, let's take a look at some of the available research. This 2020 study by Gastroenterology Research in Practice Journal looked at the impact of two probiotics used in combination for patients with hydrogen-dominant SIBO. One of these probiotics was Bacillus subtilis R0179, which is the soil-based probiotic, and they used it at a dosage of 4.4 billion live cultures three times daily for four weeks. The other probiotic was Enterococcus fecium R0026, and this was used at a dosage of 600 billion live units three times daily for four weeks. These two probiotics were used in a single supplement called Medilac S. This study found that four weeks of live combined Bacillus subtilis and Enterococcus fecium supplementation after the bowel preparation and colonoscopy can significantly alleviate patients' gastrointestinal symptoms, reduce patients' body weight, and decontaminate SIBO. To show you percentages, this chart from the study shows that for the people who took the probiotics, including the soil-based probiotics, 60% had SIBO before the treatment and only 28% of people had SIBO after treatment. To make this even more simple, the probiotics work for 8 of the 15 people with SIBO, or 53%. Per the study, the regimen including the soil-based probiotic seem to be effective for hydrogen-dominant SIBO. Obviously, it contained the Enterococcus fecium as well, so we can't give all of the credit to the soil-based probiotic. Nevertheless, it definitely seemed to have some benefit for SIBO. This 2019 study by Nutrients Journal compared a common antibiotic used for SIBO to a combination of soil-based probiotics to see which was better for irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. As shown in this image here, patients either got one of the two treatments. Treatment number one, which is indicated by G1 slash G3 is 10 days of rifaximin, which is an antibiotic at a dose of 1200 milligrams daily, followed by either 24 days of low FODMAP diet or 24 days of a nutraceutic product containing a combination of bifidobacterium longum W11, which is a probiotic, in combination with prebiotics, which are different types of fiber, including soluble fiber and group B vitamins, such as vitamin B1, 2, 6, and 12. That was all one treatment regimen. The other treatment regimen, which which is under G2, is 34 days of Megaspore Biotic, which is the product containing five different strains of soil-based probiotic, including Bacillus lichiniformis, Bacillus indicus, HU36, Bacillus subtilis, HU58, Bacillus clausi, Bacillus coagulans. And this probiotic was taken one capsule daily for the first seven days, and then two capsules daily for the following 27 days for a total of 34 days of treatment. And for the results of the study, there was a scale used in this particular research trial known as the IBS SS score, which stands for IBS severity score, and they ranked it from 0 to 500, where 0 means you have no symptoms, 500 means your symptoms are really, really bad. And they took a look at things like abdominal distension, quality of life, and a few different metrics. You can see the results of the study in this chart here. Keep in mind, G2 is the soil-based probiotic group, and G1 and G3 are the groups that use rifaximin with vitamins. Visit 1 is pretreatment, visit 2 is after day 10, visit 3 is after day 30. 34 and visit fours after day 60. As you can see by day 34, the soil-based probiotic treatment group, which is G2, seemed to be at least as good, maybe slightly better than the rifaximin plus FODMAP or vitamins groups for lowering the IBS symptoms. And then by day 60, the results seem to be about the same with significant improvement in IBS symptoms in all of the groups. From V1 to V4, the IBS SS score is down from the 260 range all the way down to somewhere in the 40s. So significant improvement. 
care for for this study, the soil-based probiotic Metaspore Biotic, which I am not affiliated with in any way, maybe as effective as Rifaximin and the low FODMAP diet slash vitamins slash prebiotics probiotics at reducing IBS symptoms. It is important to note that this study did not directly test patients for SIBO. However, because SIBO has been shown to be a very, very common cause of IBS, we can't overlook the potential benefit of soil-based probiotics from this research study. Bacillus species have been shown to be beneficial in numerous other studies as well. I'll briefly touch on three more of them here. Bacillus coagulans is likely the most researched species of soil-based probiotics. It was found to be useful for IBS in this 2021 study by the Journal of Medicine, finding that probiotic Bacillus coagulans LBSC DSM 17654 with a dose of 2 times 10 to the 9th CFUs. That basically just means 2 billion units for thrice a day. That just means three times a day. It was well tolerated, found safe, and showed significant alleviation in IBS associated clinical symptoms like bloating, cramping, abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, stomach rumbling, nausea, vomiting, headache, and anxiety compared to the placebo group. And then it went on to say bacillus coagulans, LBSC, treatment improved stool consistency, decreased the severity, and confirmed better quality of life to IBS patients. So that's study number one. There's also this 2016 study by Nutrients Journal, which showed that IBS patients who received bacillus coagulans, MTCC 5856, at a dose of 2 times 10 to the 9th, again, 2 billion live units a day, reported a significant decrease in their clinical symptoms like bloating, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, stool frequency from the placebo arm. And then finally, this 2018 study from the Food and Nutrition Research Journal found that bacillus coagulans, MTCC 5856, showed robust efficacy for the treatment of patients experiencing IBS symptoms with major depressive disorder. The improvement in depression and IBS symptoms was statistically significant and clinically meaningful. These findings support bacillus coagulans, MTCC 5856, as an important new treatment option for major depressive disorder in IBS patients. So as you can see, there are numerous studies supporting the use of soil-based probiotics for SIBO treatment and also reducing IBS symptoms, which seem to be very related to SIBO. These may not be helpful for everybody with SIBO or irritable bowel, but they're definitely an option to keep in mind. I did not personally use this type of probiotic back when I was healing and treating myself for SIBO. There really wasn't a specific reason I didn't use a soil-based probiotic back in January of 2020, besides the fact that I was more inexperienced and really didn't know what I was doing. I did, however, utilize a probiotic, including lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species to help with gut healing after doing herbals to treat SIBO. Per other research, there are different types of probiotics that also seem to be beneficial for treating SIBO besides the soil-based probiotics. For most people, it's probably a good idea to incorporate all three different types, which are one, soil-based, two, combination of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species, and number three, Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a beneficial yeast. As always, what works for one person may not work for somebody else. If you find that you do have a lot of sensitivities to medications and supplements, it may be a good idea to introduce each of these probiotic types separately, one at a time, so you're better able to gauge how each type of probiotic is affecting you. That is all for today. If you found the video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more related content. If you're new here, I post a full-length video every Monday and YouTube shorts daily throughout the week, all on gut health related content. Since you watched till the end, I think you may enjoy one of these two videos here next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.